Hi guys, welcome to another book review. Uh, this one is going to be the last in the Halloween series. September, October, I've been sharing with you all of the books that I have in my current collection that relate to Halloween theme and spooky season. Uh, so this is gonna be the last in that series. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. So this book's been around for a really long time and we actually still use Dorian Gray in some pulp culture stuff even today. Uh, the character Dorian Gray is featured in the uh, reboot of Sabrina, the, the Teenage Witch on Netflix. So we still really like to use this character. Um, oddly enough, what I remember being consistently told when I was younger, before I read this book, was that Dorian Gray makes a deal with the devil in, in the story. Um, he does that so that he would maintain his youth and that his portrait would age and bear all of his sins. Fun fact, there is no devil in the story. The devil does not show up. That's not a thing that happens. What happens is Dorian says a prayer slash makes a wish and it comes true. That's what happens. So if anything, this is more of a be careful what you wish for story because from there it kind of goes off the rails a little bit and he starts to do more hedonistic and terrible things, right? And part of it is just because of the nature of his, his wish. Okay? He didn't understand the repercussions and how that would change him as a person. And I feel like that is something that the majority of people can relate to when they've wished for something and it actually happened. You don't really know what the outcome is going to be until, or if there's going to be any consequences to those things, maybe years and years down the road. Okay? Food for thought. But yeah, that was the one thing I found really interesting is that the devil's not in here like I thought he would be. Because even on TV shows today and now where this character is featured, it's always discussed that like he made a deal with Satan. Meh. Wasn't really a thing in the book. Um... The, the public, though, his friends, do talk about him being weird and cursed after that event happened. But it's not what I had imagined where he, like, has a conversation with the devil. That doesn't happen. Um, one of the other things I found really interesting in here is that it really does showcase just consistent themes that we still find interesting today. Um, things like maintaining our youth and beauty, I, I think that's become a lot more of a, a thing. Um, you know, plastic surgery, Botox, all the things. Think about it. Then it also shares in there how important peer pressure can be, right? Because in this book, some of the reasons that Dorian makes certain choices are because of his friend's reaction when he's asking for their advice or their opinion. Uh, so it does kind of highlight how sometimes that can come back to bite you in the butt uh, and maybe have some unforeseen consequences because you decided to listen to those people. And maybe what they were telling you wasn't really good or you weren't really analyzing why they would have made a different choice versus what you would have done. So it's very interesting from that aspect as well because that's still something that impacts all of us, I think, a little bit. Um, if you have a friend and you feel that they're very close and you share with them a situation and ask what they would do and it's not what you were hoping they would say, we've all done that. Okay? And sometimes you follow their advice and it really backfires on you. 
some of the choices on here really backfired on him. Um, also at the end, there's a really nice plot twist. I didn't really see ish coming. You know, it kind of took me by surprise there. Um, because there's still a lot of folklore, especially around like cursed items, items that have, you know, a, a spell on them or, or something, right? And so it's very mystical in the end because it can, it reinforces that idea that some of these, you know, cursed objects, um, possessed objects, have a mind of their own and they can often win the day. And that is gonna be the only information that I will share <laughs> about the ending of this book. Um, if you haven't read it, I would say just give it a go. Oscar Wilde, he's a really good author and a lot of his works are still celebrated today and he for a classic author he moves really fast through a plot um i feel like he's more of a dialogue guy right so it's less descriptive about like the scene and the street and this you know it's more about this is what's happening this is a conversation that was had so he moves really quick through stuff um so sometimes reading a classic would be a good idea if they ever did a reboot of this, it would probably be not a, not a portrait. Uh, it would probably be like the best selfie in the world or something with the best lighting. And it would be some type of like crazy Instagram personality, the main character, most likely. So I don't know. They'll probably do an adaptation of that at some point and then say, well, it's loosely based on this novel. But... Yeah, I don't know. Could translate, may, may not. Um, but yeah, again, I would say just give this one a chance. It was a very entertaining read, has some surprises in it. And actually, it's still kind of relevant to today. So don't be so quick to write off some of these classic novels because there's a reason that they're considered classics and have staying power. Just saying. So anyway, till next time.